Hey everybody, welcome back. It's MJ here, just plain fun, and I have been to the estate sale again. I got a couple shorts showing a couple. I think this one is worth doing a full-length video, and trust me, you are going to want to stick around to the end to see this really special plane that I picked up. Let's get to it. Yeah, I'm going to take you all through tool by tool and show you what I picked up. So this is what I would consider a timber framing slick. Somebody go ahead and come in the comments and tell me if, if you think I'm wrong. But most of these I picked up to flip, including this one, and... Even though this one's got some little marks on there, I think this one will do really do well. I think there's somebody out there doing some timber framing that will be able to put that thing back to use. So working tool or working wood by wedge and edge. So let's go through a couple of these. I left the price tag on this one because this is one that I plan on keeping. So this is in that 720, 750 family. It does not have the, the number on here. So <clears throat> it's not an authentic 720, but it's in that style. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and put together a little collection of those and this is a little bowl ads which i don't know if y'all are familiar with that but it's uh number two there and it does have an actual manufacturer on there which is one of the things that separates these that makes some more valuable than others and it's got some pitting here but the cutting edge isn't isn't too bad and that can definitely be put back to work so little bowl ads and that one of course will be for sale as well and since i'm a parts guy of course y'all know i can't turn down some parts when I see them for a decent price. So I did pick this one up, a little two and three eight, so it'll fit a four and a half, a six, or a seven. And that, I, that of course, I'll turn. I don't. Or excuse me, I'll flip. I don't necessarily have anything that can that can go in. This one is a number three size in terms of the width, but that is a compass plane. That's for a number one thirteen. When you see that kind of flatter chip breaker like that, and then this opening right here is a little higher, so we know that one's for a one thirteen. But that one will do well as well on the flip. It is a sweetheart, so nice little pickup there. And they had a set of blades for a 45 that were really, really fairly priced. Uh, I did feel a little bit, I don't know if guilty is the right word. I felt bad because the people that priced it obviously were not tool folks and they did not necessarily realize that this went with one of the 45s. So they had the 45 itself ridiculously overpriced. It was missing most of its parts, but then they had the blades listed separately. I don't know. I mean, from an ethical point of view, you know, imagine a madhouse with 50 people in a room. What would you do? Would you stop and tell the guys that were running it, the guys and the gal and say, Hey, these actually belong with that tool over there and maybe try and work a deal. Yeah, I'll be honest. I didn't do that. I went ahead and bought these separately. And part of that was because the 45 was missing so many parts. It's not like I was separating a complete tool by any means. But those will be for sale. I'll probably just sell that as a complete set. I have not actually taken inventory of that yet. And then I picked up this number 66. This seems to be all too common when you find them in the wild. They typically have one fence, even though they originally came with two. Yeah, the, the straight one and then the curved one. And then they almost always just have just the single blade. So I picked this one up. That's not the original screw to hold on that fence, but it seems to be working. So nothing wrong with that. If y'all haven't heard, uh, Woodya, W-O-O-D-Y-A-H, Woodya is selling replacement parts for these. So you can get reproduction fences for that and then if just in case you don't know you can actually buy these blades on ebay there's a st james bay tool company makes those and sells them on ebay so you could get yourself a working 66 together for you know it's going to cost you a, a bit but it's cheaper than buying one complete i think this was another indicator that the people pricing it were just out there doing their best but they're not necessarily tool folks these were both priced the same and if you know you're mini planes your finger planes however you refer to them your 101 you know these are not valued the same i typically see a squirrel tail sell for about twice what just a regular 101 will sell for so this little squirrel tail i picked it up it's a little sweetheart and this one will do well i don't need it in my collection i think i have a, a v logo if i'm not mistaken and then this little 101 the only reason i bought this was just because it's got the nice s casting mark and then that's an early one so it's got that early stanley rule and level company blade so I'll flip this one as well. That is the original thumb screw for the lever cap. So that's kind of nice. This thing is, is in pretty good shape, especially for its age. It is worth mentioning that patrons, JPF patrons, will get uh, priority on all of these. So the ones that I'm flipping will show up on the JPF only 
Facebook group first. So this is your your cue. If you've been thinking about supporting the JPF Patreon, now's the time. As low as two bucks a month, and you too can get first access to this kind of stuff. I picked up this little dude. It says the Victor on it. And this one I actually picked up for a local friend of mine. I'm going to give it to him. He doesn't even know it yet. Maybe he's going to see it in this video and go, oh, hey, that's me. But he collects little oddball wrenches like this. I'm banking that he maybe doesn't have one of these yet. So pretty cool stuff. And then this one, little alligator wrench, another one I left the price on because I plan on keeping this one. Probably put this in my shadow box, my uh, tribute to John Walters, or excuse me, John Walter. I'll put this one in there for that little spot. You know the place. And speaking of prices, some of this stuff was ridiculously overpriced. Most of the hand planes were, and a lot of those didn't sell on Friday or Saturday. I had a friend of mine that went back on Sunday and he said that most of the hand planes, the overpriced ones were still there. And he ended up buying a fair number of them at a significant discount. But this one, 15 bucks for a little, what I think is a pattern makers router plane. I picked this one up because y'all know I've got a certain affinity for router planes. So that one will go in my collection. And I can't turn down a reasonably priced spoke shave. This one is a Stanley Sweetheart and that's got a really, really nice blade that's barely been used and there are of course those those niche collectors that just love a sweetheart logo and i don't blame them and so i picked this one up to flip of course because that's kind of what i do and then i got this 55 and you can never go wrong with these either and this one's actually a v logo so i'm going to compare this one with the v logo that i have and then i'll keep the better of the two and then i'll flip the other one but yeah this one will do really well as well i usually see these sell for around like 60 bucks or so. And a great thing to buy at estate sales is books because a lot of times if the person was a woodworker, they usually have some some publications. And so I went ahead and picked this one up. And a lot of times books are pretty realistically priced. So I got this one for a really great price. And then one of the other gentlemen that I met there who shall remain nameless, picked up a copy of the Walter Stanley book for five whole dollars. So that was kind of I don't know what the right word is. It made me sick to my stomach that he got it and I didn't, but you know, I got this one. So I'll end up putting this one probably up on, can I have it? I ended up making about three trips, three separate trips through in order to really make sure that I covered all the nooks and crannies. This one was, I picked up on my second trip through. I probably overpaid for it at 45. As you can see, it's missing the broad, which just seems all too common. And this is not the correct screw. This is not the correct depth stop screw right here this is actually the one that goes on the fence right here usually although it might be i mean i'm sure it probably fits but it's a little bit different but i'll, I'll find a home for that one uh, the main reason why i got this one of course is i have options i can either sell the parts because it's not complete or i can put a rod on this and then get the right depth stop screw and then sell this as a complete tool and the other reason why I got it is because this is an older one. This is a really early one. And it's actually got quite a bit of blade left. But I don't know if y'all are familiar with that. Or if you've seen one of my three videos that I did specifically on rabbit planes. But that's one of the really, really early 78 irons there. It's got the early patent dates on there from the 1880s. So I couldn't turn this one down. I probably should have, but... I went ahead and picked it up and that one, like I said, either a project or it'll get parted out one or the other. Got these on my first trip through and they were not priced. And what I found out quickly as I was checking out was when stuff was not priced, then the person checking you out would typically give you, at least in this case, gave me a really, really great deal. So I paid not a whole lot for these little number four size Stanley Trammel points. And these will do really well on the resale. And then I also got this one. This is I'm making the case for looking through drawers and on shelves and behind stuff because these were hiding back there, these little Stanley level glasses in a nice box. I mean, this thing's in pretty nice shape. And there are actually a couple of little vials in there or level glasses, as you might call them, as Stanley called them. So that was a nice pickup, and those were ridiculously cheap as well. They kind of went, ended up going into a bundle deal, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And speaking of levels, the gentleman whose estate we were pilfering, if we're being honest, had a nice collection of levels hanging on the wall. Picked up a little surface rush from just sitting there. But this is an LS Starrett. All three vials are good on it. It's a little six inch. I think this one will do really well on the flip. But I always like to pick up levels like that. And then this one is another LS Starrett. 
This one's about 12 and a half inches long. Again, all three vials are good. I always encourage you to check that if you're ever buying vials at an estate sale because that will really, really impact the value on these. But again, another stair, so that one's really nice. It'll do really well. And then this one is probably the the best of the bunch. This is a Stanley number 37. And I'll be honest, I have not seen very many of these around. Same thing, all three vials are good on it. And it's a sweetheart. So I think the gentleman was might have been a bit of a sweetheart collector himself. And I really like it. If I was in more into levels, I might even consider keeping that one. All right, we're getting down to the end. I'm going to show you all these two, and then I'm going to show you that really sweet plane that I was telling you about at the beginning. I like looking for little stuff like this at an estate sale. This did not have a hatch in it. I'm hoping it's going to fit one of mine. I think I paid like maybe 50 cents for that. But yeah, I always look for little stuff like that, and I think you should too. And this one right here, you know how it is when you first, those of you that have been to them, you go to an estate sale, you first get in the door, and you just start grabbing stuff. You're not even really looking that close. I did not look and see that this was not a 12 and a half. So typically it's the 12 and a half. Well, it's always the 12 and a half to have the holes drilled down through the center there and then have the auxiliary sole. It's supposed to be rosewood. This one is shop built and it looks like they did a pretty good job. I mean, I haven't actually tried this thing out, but I'll be honest. I didn't look that close at it. I just picked it up. Usually if a 12 or 12 and a half has a good handle, has all three original brass I'm probably going to go ahead and buy it. And then I looked later and figured out that this is not the original scraper blade, but that's okay. I mean, we could put an edge on that and then it, it would do just fine. I really think this would make a great user number 12 here. And that's probably the approach that I'm going to take. And now the moment you've been waiting for, check this thing out. There's a little Stanley number three, but wait, there's more. This has got to be one of the nicest boxes that I've seen. I mean, of course, there are nicer boxes out there. But as far as finding one just at an estate sale, all four corners are intact on the top, which is fairly uncommon. And, you know, for being 70 years old, that's that's pretty nice there for a pasteboard box. And then on the bottom of it, it's got just this one corner that's pulled out or blown out here. But original wrapping paper on the inside and then this cardboard that was original for the plane as well so this thing has really sat untouched for the last 70 years and as you can see we got a little type 19 here number three and it's in just beautiful shape i think it's one of those where this thing was bought it was used maybe once or twice and then it was put in the box and promptly not used again for the next 70 years but what really makes this thing special above all else aside from the condition of the box aside from the condition of the plane itself which is just pretty much unused is this right here original purchase receipt so four days before christmas in 1953 somebody walked into the south side hardware company in richmond virginia and paid eight dollars the sum of eight dollars for this little number three and that's pretty much the condition that it was in the day they left the hardware store 70 years ago. So that thing is, is pretty sweet. And then I think between the box and especially this purchase receipt, this makes it just a really unique piece here. And I actually did a little bit of, I guess, internet research on the Southside Hardware Company. So it turns out that that hardware company stayed in business all the way through 2018 or 2019. What I'll do is I'll drop a link to an article that I found about the Southside Hardware Company from when it closed. And I think y'all might find that interesting, but it hung on all the way until, you know, right before COVID. I kind of wish it was still open. I think that'd be pretty cool 